This is chapter 2.1, exercises 27 through 32. This section of book, section 2.1, has to do with the beginning of polynomial functions, uh, linear, and in this case, going into quadratic functions. And in this case, in exercises 27 through 32, find the vertex and axis of the graph of the function, rewrite the equation for the function in vertex form. When we say axis, we're talking about axis of symmetry. What happened when I worked out these problems earlier, I was completing the square, and by completing the square, it's going to take more time and be more complex than doing this basic thing. I hope you might remember from sometime back in your math history something called the quadratic formula, and that's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and that over 2a. And what I'm going to do with that 2a, and you're going to see why in a second, I'm going to put this 2a right over here to the left side of that denominator. For the axis symmetry, the axis symmetry is just this part I'm boxing in of the quadratic formula, x equals negative b over 2a. I have a little song for that. Negative b over 2a, x is negative b over 2a, graphing parabolas the easy way. Start with negative b over 2a. And so we take x equals negative b over 2a. And to find a, b, and c, we go to standard form of our of a quadratic expression. In this case, 3 is going to be a, so we'll say a equals 3, the quadratic term, the linear term, the x term is going to be b is equal to 5, and c, the, the constant term, is equal to negative 4. However, we, in this equation, don't need to use, do we, the value of c the uh, constant term, or the constant coefficient. So, let's go ahead and put in negative b. Well, well, if 5 is b, then our numerator, we have negative 5. In our denominator, we have 2 times 3. So, we simplify to negative 5 sixths. And negative 5 sixths is the value of our axis of symmetry. It says find the axis of the graph, the axis of symmetry. So we will go ahead and, and put this in axis of symmetry. And we're going to have as a function the equation x equals negative 5 sixths. And this is going to help us find what our equation is, function in vertex form. Next, we're going to find the vertex. And what we're going to do is plug in this value of negative 5 sixths for x. So we'll say f of negative 5 sixths. And that's going to be equal to, we take 3, and in the place of x, we put negative 5 sixths. And we square that. Plus 5 times negative 5 sixths. And then we have minus 4. And so we just continue simplifying this out. And I'm going to continue to work to the right. Now, if I had to pick the most hated part of mathematics, it, it, it fractions might be a good candidate, and even for pre-calculus students. I asked the question the other day, okay, so we have three times, well, negative five-sixths here squared is going to be 25 over 36. So that's the squared, and then we have plus uh, 5 times negative 5, so that's going to be minus 25 sixths, and then we have minus 4. 
And our common denominator for this is going to be 31 over 36, 136. So I said common denominator is going to be 36. So let's just go ahead and rewrite this. And so uh, 3 times 25 over 36, that's going to be 75 over 36. Next, this negative 25 over 6, well, to get a common denominator of 36, we have to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 6. And so we have 36 as the denominator here. And 6 times 25 on top, we have negative 150, or 150. And then minus 4. Well, we're going to have to have 4 times 36. So what we're going to have is we'll have 36 as the denominator. And 4 times 36 is our numerator, which is going to be 144. And we work all that out. We get 75 minus 150. It's going to be minus or negative 75 over 36. And subtract out 144 over 36. And that's going to all boil down to negative 219 over 36. So that is going to be uh, help us with our vertex. So now for our vertex, we have the x value, negative 5 sixths, and our y value is going to be negative 219 over 36. Okay, so we have a vertex. We have an axis of symmetry. And the last thing we're going to do is find the equation in vertex form. So that's going to be f of x, this time in vertex form, is equal to 3 times quantity x. And x is negative 5, 6, so we say minus h. So we'll say minus negative 5, 6, which is going to be plus 5, 6. And we're going to square this. And then we have our k value is going to be negative 219 over 36. So we say minus 219 over 36. So kind of tedious, but something that we can do. And you can see even without a calculator. Next item problem to look at is 29. We have the same situation, but f of x equals 8x minus x squared plus 3. And so I'm going to rewrite this equation in standard form and put negative x squared as our first term plus 8x and plus 3. And for this, our value of a is going to be negative 1. Our value of b is going to be 8. And our value of c, which we're not going to use, is 3. We're not going to use here. Now, again, our axis symmetry formula is x equals negative b over 2a. And so that is going to be, in this case, negative 8. So we have negative 8, because b is 8, over 2 times a, and a is negative 1. So what we have is negative 8 divided by negative 2, or 4. So for our axis of symmetry, we have this a little more neatly if I can. Okay, not so bad for me. X equals 4. Next, we're going to plug 4 in to this function. 
So we'll say f of 4 is equal to, I'll use the original function, we'll have 8 times 4 minus, we have 4 squared plus 3. And that's going to be 8 times 4 is 32. And then we have minus 16 plus 3. Well, 32 minus 16 is 16 plus 3 is 19. So our vertex is therefore going to be the coordinate pair x equals 4 and y equals 19. And so we have our boxed in answers here for axis symmetry and for our vertex at the point 4 comma 19. And now we're going to finish up here with the function in vertex form. That's going to be f of x is equal to, well, in vertex form, we're going to have negative in the place of the a, and x, well, our value of our x symmetry is 4, so we're going to say minus 4, and that's going to be squared, plus 19. Now, this one should be maybe easier than problem 27 in that we didn't go into fractions, did we? So this one probably could be simpler for a lot of students. The last one I'm going to be doing here, and this exercise says 31, we have g of x equals 5x squared plus 4 minus 6x. And again, I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. So we have 5x squared as our first quadratic term, then minus 6x, which is our linear term, and plus 4, which is our constant term. And we have a is equal to 5, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to 4. So now with the formula, x equals negative b over 2a, we're going to have, in the numerator here, we're going to have negative, negative 6. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it in like that. Negative, negative 6 over 2a, and that's going to be 2 times 10. And so what that's going to leave us with is hang on. I made a little mistake there. So we have negative, negative 6 over 2 times 5. There we go. That looks a little better. And so what we're going to have is 6 over 10, which simplifies to 3 fifths. So our axis of symmetry, I see on this one fractions coming back. We got away without fractions on the last one. going to be x equals three-fifths. But we're dealing with fifths and not six. Maybe this will be a little simpler. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is our, uh, oops, back. our vertex. To find our vertex, we're going to plug in the value of three-fifths. So g of three-fifths is going to be equal to five times three-fifths squared plus four minus six times three-fifths. And just kind of, I'm just going to work across here, continue working to the right. We're going to have five times and three-fifths squared is going to be 9 25 fifths. 
and then we have plus 4, and we have minus 6 times 3. Well, 6 times 3 is 18. So now to simplify, I'm going to now come below here to the left a little bit. We have 5 times 9, which is 45, divided by 25. But what about if we take 5 divided by 25? That's going to just leave us with uh, over 5 there. So that's going to give us Forty-five over twenty-five, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Forty-five over twenty-five because nine times five, so forty-five over twenty-five minus. We're going to have that's eighteen over five. So 18 over 5. I think we could take this, before I do that, we can kind of fix, I'm going to fix it later. And the last thing we have, oh, the 4, I got that out of order. Plus 4. So I'm going to make this 4 into 5th. So I'm going to call it 20 over 5. It's going to be equivalent to 4. And now I'm going to take this 45 over 25 and make that 9 fifths. Let's see why we can do that. Divide both the numerator and denominator by 5. So 9 fifths minus 18 fifths plus 20 fifths. So 9 minus 18 is going to be negative 9 plus 20 is going to be 11 fifths. So for our vertex, we have our input value here, our x value of 3 fifths, and we have our y coordinate 11 fifths. And so our equation is going to be g of x is equal to, we have our a value, which is 5, and we have x, and our value of x is 3 fifths, so we're going to be, it's going to be minus h, which h is 3 fifths, 3 fifths, and that's going to be quantity squared, and it's going to be plus 11 fifths. So yeah, fractions, but not quite as tedious as, as problem 27. So I'm going to box in everything we've figured out here. So that's it. And then there's here problem 32. Anyway, good luck. And... I will see you for another video lesson sometime soon, I hope.